Hi guys, I'm Nazmul Hasan and the topic of today's short talk will be very extensive. I'll cover multiple topics together. I'll begin with RCS and then I'll talk about the monostatic and biostatic RCS and then move on to the topic of antenna RCS which is a bit different from normal RCS. I'll talk about the structural mode antenna RCS and then antenna mode RCS. And after that, I'll talk about the plane wave, which is the uh, thing that we use in order to measure RCS. And then I'll talk about the polarization of plane wave, which is very important. Without the concept of polarization, we cannot understand RCS properly. And then I'll talk about the theta polarized and phi polarized plane wave. So that would be the content of theoretical part of this video. So uh, the RCS application is primarily found in military style te technology. It's because uh, most of the military aircraft wants to penetrate the enemy area without being detected. For example, uh, if, uh, if it gets detected, then easily it will be destroyed by anti-aircraft missiles. So a military technology primarily uses this radar cross-section and apart from military, we also use in aviation technology. So it's very important uh, field in uh, radar engineering and antenna engineering. And uh, basically the definition of RCS is a uh, dependent on several factors. For example, if we have a target uh, located uh, from the radar uh, at a distance of R, then we can express the RCS of the target by using this equation. And RCS is primarily uh, measured in terms of squared meters or in more convention conventional unit, which is known as dBA squared meter. And it's basically the ratio of the back scattered power density to the incident power density on the target. And back scattered power means the reflected power from the target to uh, the radar receiver antenna. And uh, RCS depends on several factors. Primarily, it depends on the physical geometry and material and then the direction of the radar, and then polarization of the scattered signal and signal frequency as well. The value of RCS uh, basically uh, uh, is a measure of how easily uh, detectable an object is. So the lower is the value of RCS, the better for military uh, vehicle or anti uh, or the missiles or the aircraft because they don't want to be get detected and RCS has two uh, classification one is monostatic RCS where transmitter and the receiver antenna are located at the same place so this is the monostatic RCS and then we have got the bistatic RCS where we have several receiver antennas located at different positions and uh, we have also a transmitter antenna located at different positions. So this is the case of bistatic RCS. Now the monostatic RCS of antenna is kind of uh, different from the normal RCS concept. For example, if we have a planar patch antenna or any antenna, then we can um, we can define the monostatic RCS of antenna in terms of two components. The first one is the structural mode RCS, which is normally expressed by sigma s. And the second one is the antenna mode RCS, which is uh, defined by sigma a. Basically, structural mode RCS depends on the antenna type, geometry, and also the material constitutes whereas the antenna mode depends on the reflection coefficient, basically the impedance matching of the antenna. And the total uh, monostatic RCS of the antenna can be expressed by a single equation, a closed form equation, 
uh, which is this and where the phi is the phase difference between the two modes uh, practically all the antennas that we operate or that we employ in practical uh, application and they are matched with VTL so they have got a uh, matched load uh, termination conditions so in that case we can ignore the antenna mode RCS and what practically matters is the structural mode RCS but uh, remember that if we uh, vary the load obviously the antenna mode RCS will come into play so I I'd like to recommend two uh, good textbooks for a radar cross section. The first one is a radar cross section by E.G. Knott, and the second one is a classic textbook by George T. Rack, and it has got two volumes. So give them a try, they are a very good textbook. So uh, then I'll move on to the topic of plane wave. We all know uh, this topic, plane wave, and this uh, plane wave originates from the uh, solution of this wave equation that can be derived from Maxwell's equations. So the plane wave is one of the solutions of this uh, wave equation. There are many solutions of this uh, wave equation, and one of them is the plane wave solution. And, and why they are called plane wave? So uh, there is a reason that they are called plane wave because uh, if we draw a Cartesian two-dimensional uh, coordinate system and uh, if we assume the direction of the propagation of the wave is along the z-axis, then uh, the wave front of the plane wave will look uh, kind of like this. They will be uh, similar to planes. And if we visualize the moving uh, uh, wave in this way, then uh, observe the orientation of the E field and H field. They are located in the same plane. So that is why we call them plane wave, because the E field and H field are orthogonal and they are located on the same plane. That's the reason we call them plane wave. So it's very important because we use this in order to find out the RCS of objects. And then uh, we uh, have the concept of polarization of the plane wave. Basically, this is the direction of the electric field of the plane wave, which is propagating in space and time. For example, uh, for the first case, if we uh, uh, observe the orientation of the E field and H field, then the E field is oscillating along X axis. It's pretty clear, right? So uh, in this sense, we call that the plane wave is polarized along X axis because E field is oscillating along the X axis. So it's basically a vertically polarized plane wave. And in the second case, uh, look at the orientation of the E field. Now the E field is oscillating along Y axis. So in this sense, we call that plane wave is uh, basically uh, polarized along Y axis or horizontally polarized plane wave. So this is for the Cartesian coordinate system. And we also have a spherical coordinate system where we use uh, three other different uh, vectors in order to indicate the three axes. So imagine a point and then we can express the three uh, components of the unit vector along these directions, theta, phi and r. And then uh, we can obviously define the plane wave in terms of the theta polarized and phi polarized plane wave. So for this case observe the electric field direction. If we uh, assume the electric field is along this direction, then uh, we can call it theta polarized plane wave because uh, the E field lies in the theta plane. All right? 
So it's basically the uh, field. We, 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 we uh, observe the field orientation in which plane it lies. And in this case, E field is along this direction and it lies in the phi plane. So we call it phi polarized plane wave. So let's consider the first case where we have got a theta polarized plane wave with an, with an incident angle of theta equal 0 and phi equal 0. Then uh, the plane wave uh, is marked by the red color, will be like this. And the E field is in this direction. And K is the propagation vector, it's the direction of the propagation. So if we zoom this area, we can find out that uh, K is making an angle of zero degree with the normal incidence of the Pacentina. So uh, this is the first case. And then the second case where we have an incidence uh, angle of theta equals 60 degree and phi equal zero degree. And uh, then the plane wave will be like this. You can see the K vector and E vector and obviously we can compare this figure with the spherical coordinate system and then we can easily find out that uh, the k vector which is the violet color uh, line is making an angle of 60 degree with the normal incidence of the patch all right So we will consider the last case, which is case 3. In this case, we will consider a phi polarized plane wave with an incidence angle of theta equal 15 and phi equal 0 degree. So the direction of E field is along this way, which, is, uh, which lies in the phi plane. And uh, if we zoom this uh, configuration of the orientation of the field, we find out the k vector is making an angle of 15 degree with the normal incidence of the patch.